Hey, uh, Lunar, the three chapters of Fairy Tale are out this week. Are you by any chance gonna review them? I don't know. I honestly don't feel like reviewing three chapters in one video. Wow, last week's chapter really got to you, huh? <sighs> it has, really. Makes me wonder why I just keep doing this. I guess a part of me still wants to know what happens in the end. Well, if it makes you feel any better, this next upcoming arc might be the last arc. Really? Well, I guess if it's the last arc, and I guess one more arc of fairy tale wouldn't hurt. Although, I don't know. I, I think I should probably drop it. I mean, what's the point of reviewing something if you don't enjoy it? Well, it is your choice, but you managed to go through Tenro Island, the Grand Magic Games, the Seven Year Time Skip, Eclipse Gates, even the freaking Dragon Invasion. If you can survive all these arcs, and made it this far, I'm pretty sure you could survive at least its one final arc. Besides, without reviewers like you, all we would get are people that praise chapters and give it a 10 out of 10, despite its many, many flaws. I mean, do you really want that? Oh god, no I don't! Exactly. Besides, these chapters are actually not that bad. They're actually decent. And we get a special appearance with Zareph! Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just say Zareph? Oh my god, Zareph was one of the reasons why I keep reading Fairy Tale! Alright. Alright, you talk me into this narrative, son. I'll keep doing it. I'll keep reviewing Fairy Tale. But I swear to god, if this final arc sucks, if it's too predictable, if they screw up Zareph's character, I will freaking kill you. You can't kill me, I'm a voice. I don't have a body. Well. I'll do something really terrible if this arc ends terribly, alright? Okay, 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 you don't need to get worked up. Oh, this isn't me getting all worked up. When I get worked up, you will know. <laughs> Help me. Spylum27 here, and I know I wasn't actually planning on doing this, but I read the chapters and I figured, uh, what the hell, right? I know the last week's chapter wasn't that good, and I know a lot of people are saying that I should probably, like, not bother reviewing Fairy Tale since I lost sense of enjoyment. But since I heard that Zareph was gonna show up, and this is gonna be the final arc, I figured, why not? I managed to go through this much, I can go through at least one more arc. So let's get started with 338, The Great Banquet. Okay, this is basically Fairy Tale and the rest of the guilds having a special party at the King's Castle to celebrate the victory against the dragon. Now basically you just see a bunch of uh, characters interacting with each other, not that really important that much. Uh, lots of shenanigans ensue and the only thing I could actually tell you is that Natsu actually hasn't shown up. But I guess I could try to talk about a few things that might have been important in that chapter. Well, let's see, um, Juvia actually went through another hairstyle change at trying to impress Grey-sama. Hell, she even confessed her love to Grey, but Grey is like, no thanks, I'm entering a new age too. I've got to clearly lay out the things that I don't like. So, did he just say that he doesn't love Juvia? Because if it is, then thank god he finally got an answer! That or he doesn't like the new look, I don't freaking know. Hey, if that's true, then I guess Juvia can now hook up with Leon, right? Wrong, because Leon has decided to give up on Juvia because he knows that Juvia doesn't have feelings for him. And also, Juvia is still pining over Grey-sama. God freaking damn it, this girl does not take no for an answer. The other situation, okay, this was more of a WTF moment. Uh, Miliano is also being depressed. I mean, can you really blame her? She actually learned the truth behind um, Simon's death. So in order for her, for Erza to cheer up, she pulls out Happy out of her cleavage. I'm not kidding, that actually happened. Not only that, but she pulls out Charles, okay, apparently her name is Carla, and Panther Lily. I am not touching that with a 10-foot stick. 
Okay, and now we get to the third other thing. Uh, Yukino actually runs into uh, Sting and Rogue, who, by the way, have um, decided to form a friendship with Fairy Tail. Uh, Yukino actually was really nervous and uncomfortable, so she decides to leave. But uh, Sting gets her to stop, and he apologizes on behalf of Sabretooth of how she was was treated in the guild. Uh, apparently, Minerva and her dad have vanished. Which probably explains why they never even showed up when the dragons invaded. Sting said that the guild is going to rebuild from scratch. And he offers Yukino to come back to the guild. But Kagura says no because she's in property of Mermaid Heel. Referring to that stupid bat in the Grand Magic games. But then all the rest of the guilds decide, no way, Yukino should join us. And they fight over it, yes, they, that's how they fight. And while they're fighting, Yukino's crying and sh because she was really happy that everybody wants her to join their guild. Like, she's really wanted. And um, Arcadius interrupts them, and he introduces the king, who's about to present himself in person. But it turns out it is fucking Natsu. I, okay, this kind of made me laugh a little, but goddamn Natsu, you're a freaking idiot! <laughs> He wears the crown and the king's outfit, and he's like, What's up, bitches? Let's crank this up a notch! And fucking Natsu, man. <laughs> Honestly, I will let that slide because, eh, this is a, one of the lighthearted chapters. Everybody's dumbfounded. The king, who apparently turns out to be the pumpkin mascot, wants his crown back and his clothes. So, yeah, that's 338. This was a meh chapter, honestly. I was actually surprised Natsu didn't show up at first, but then all of a sudden, yeah, he's the king because he's wearing all the clothes. Honestly, this chapter was lighthearted, and I'll honestly admit, I didn't actually think this chapter sucked. It made me smile a bit. It was way better than 337, so I'm gonna let Natsu's shenanigans slide for now. I mean, at least he wasn't destroying the castle. The next chapter is 339. The Stardust Essence. This chapter actually has more important stuff going on because in the chapter begins with uh, Jalal and Melody. They're looking for Old Tear. However, they run into Dornbolt. The senators had their memories erased of what happened in the dragon invasion. The reason for this is because the royal family got their hands on the dark magic according to Zareb's book, Eclipse. If word got out that the royal family had dabbled in the dark arts, then reputation would be ruined and the whole royal system would be collapsed. So Dornbolt had to alter the memories of not only the senators, but everybody else. Minus the guild members, of course, and the royal family. And as for Lahar, he had his memories altered because he doesn't want his reputation to be um, ruined. Now, this doesn't really mean that Jalal and Dornbolt are all buddy-buddy. He considers this as a one-time thing. But before Dornbolt can leave, Jalal asks him what happened to Cobra. Turns out after the dragon invasion, Cobra went back to the Magic Council to go back in jail. He mentioned that he heard some voices, including Kuberios, who was, uh, I think it was the uh, Flying Hydra, that was Kinana, apparently. Oh, thank you for Alchemist of History for pointing that out with the whole Kinana thing, by the way. Cobra has some ulterior motive. The reason why he's going back so that he can save the rest of the Eurasian says which means we might see them come back in the next arc. I'm actually hoping they would come back because I liked the Aurora Sciences. I did like the Aurora Sciences arc, but so seeing them back again will be pretty cool. Cobra told Dornbolt that the gates of the netherworld are about to open. Melody and Jalal, they're talking about the gates of the netherworld, which was a connection with the alliance between Grimoire Hearts, Aurora Sciences, and another guild called Tataris. Which could be the new main villains of the next arc, but we'll just have to wait and see. We don't know a lot about them, but according to Jalal, they are a supernatural and mysterious guild. It looks like that they've finally managed to make a move, and it's got something to do with the gates of the netherworld or, so netherworld or something. All of a sudden, they run into an old lady who knows who they are, and um, said that a certain lady wanted her to give them this letter. Turns out that the letter belonged to Ultir. 
And I gotta admit, this made me sad. I felt so bad what happened to Ultir, but I'll get to that later on. The letter said, In our previous battle, I failed whilst attempting a certain spell. As a result, I haven't much time left, but I didn't want to leave without saying goodbye. My journey ends here. I fell short of accomplishing my intended goals, but please never forget the spirit and resolve of Crime Sorcier. It means to forget not your sins, not to be crushed by them, and to hope that one day they'll be forgiven. It means to never stop loving people. The real fight starts now. As long as the ref remains alive, tragedy will continue to befall all mages. Please carry on my spirit as well and continue to fight. I pray that your journey brings happiness to everyone. Melody, she's so sad that she starts crying. All of a sudden, the old lady that gave Jalal and Melody the letter disappeared. And then we cut back to the carriage, which um, fairy tale members, the main ones at least, are riding in to get back to Magnolia. However, um, Grey notices the old lady. Now, the old lady actually gets her a monologue herself, saying that I've done nothing but curse my own existence. Anxiety, rage, not to mention hate that I couldn't hold in. However, whenever I look up into the sky, it dawned upon me how insignificant I was. What lies there is an infinite amount of possibilities. Now, when Gray noticed the old lady, he tells the driver to stop the carriage. And then we get more of the old lady's monologuing, saying, These countless rays of light that beam down and illuminate me, such warm rays almost as if they were trying to cleanse me of my sins. Yes, if you haven't figured it out until now, the old lady was Ultir. It was the result of using Lost Ages. Apparently, when she used Lost Ages, her body started to rapidly age, meaning that she doesn't have a lot of time left and eventually she will die. And from what she said in her inner monologue, she seems to be really grateful that her sacrifice was worth something. So this was actually a good thing because at least Ulter now knows that her sacrifice wasn't in vain. She did save some people within that one minute she reversed from time. Now, when Grey noticed who the old lady was, that it was really Ultir, he actually remembered what happened in the one minute before it was reversed. The minute that he supposedly died. And I don't know like how he figured it out and how he still remembered what happened before the time reversal, but he figured it out and he started to tear up himself. Aside from Melody who's being comforted by Jalal, Grey, he starts crying now because he says, both daughter and mother saved me. Why? And then the chapter ends with um, the sun rays shining down upon the ground and the words, farewell, my loved ones. So that is Fairy Tale chapter 339, and this was actually a way better chapter than 338. We learned what happened to Ultir, and I felt so bad for her. At least she knew that her sacrifice wasn't in vain, but because of Lost Ages, her body started to rapidly age, meaning eventually she is going to die. I guess you count that as one casualty of what happened in this dragon war. And I also felt really bad for Grey because she he felt so sad what happened to Ultir. I mean, seeing Grey cry was also sad too. So this is actually it for Ultir. This is probably the last time we'll ever get to see her again. So uh, I guess all I can say is uh, farewell Ultir, you'll be missed. Also, this new dark guild, Tataris? It sounds interesting, but I thought we were going to see Raventail again. Then again, Raventail got trolled hard, so hopefully this new guild might pose more of a threat than Raventail, honestly. I'm actually looking forward to seeing like what Tartarus' connection with between Grimmar Hearts and Horatian says. I know they have some sort of alliance, but Horatian says might eventually come back, so that's also a good thing, That another thing that I'm really looking forward to seeing. 